brand new video. I, I really like this one. Also, the baby is here. He's always here. He says, hello everybody, welcome. <laughs> we cook a lot in this video. Um, I unbox some new merchandise. We also go to the ceramic studio a lot because I started my first hand building class. I'm having a lot of fun hand building. But before we get into the video and all the fun stuff, we need to thank today's sponsor, which is Ana Luisa. I'm very, very happy to be working with them again. If you didn't already know, Ana Luisa is a jewelry brand. They make really high quality yet affordable pieces. Their prices start around $39. They're also climate neutral certified and carbon neutral, which is really, really cool. I worked with them last year and the pieces that I got from them are still in really, really good condition. Um, I sleep in them every night and they're still in great condition. So yeah, they just make really nice stuff and I just love the design of them. I'm a very simple jewelry person. Like I like very simple classic looks. Like I love a good gold hoop, um, but yeah, they really have something for everybody. They have like fun statement pieces. Um, they have like the minimal look that I like. Their pieces make really great gift as well. Last time I worked with them, I let my mom and my sister each pick out a piece. Um, this time Annalise was very generous and they offered us more pieces. So I got to pick out six things from them. So I'm currently wearing like the gold huggy hoops. Um, they're super cute and simple. Like I really like having this as like my everyday, everyday jewelry wear. So yeah, I honestly really, really like their jewelry, which is why I've chosen to work with them again. Here's all the pieces we selected together. The pieces come in this really nice like cloth satchel thing. Um, I really enjoy the packaging, but yeah, here are the pieces we selected. Um, my sister and I both got earrings and my mom got a necklace and a bracelet. And obviously these pieces are going to different people, but I do think they all really match. Like I think you could stack them and I think it would all look really, really good all together. Um, and yeah, I, I, it's a really great gift and I'm really excited to send these to my mom and my sister and they are both super happy to pick them out. They are currently having a Valentine's Day sale that's going to run from January 26th to February 16th where you can get where you can buy one, get one 50% off. So please check that out if you would like. It's always a good time of year to get someone you love something nice and this is a really good gift option. So click on the link in my description if you'd like to check it out. Um, and yeah, thank you so much Anna Luisa for sponsoring and let's just get into the actual video. So cute, I'm obsessed.
So I want to finish my zine I've been working on and I got, I posted it on Instagram yesterday and I got some comments asking to see my process. So it's gonna be like me kind of walking you through my zine making process. I've only done it, this is my first time doing it. So I'm not like an expert, but I thought it would be fun to share that. Okay, Rover, can you explain how you um, format a zine? I just purposely made the canvas size the same size that I want the zine to be, which is five by eight. And then I just started drawing. My process is kind of simple. I first started by making a script so I knew all the words that were going to be on the zine. I like to make different layers, different opacity levels. So for example, I do one layer all in like the full solid color at 100% opacity. And then I'll make another layer and I'll set it to like 38, maybe 50 actually, so it's more uniform. Anything I draw on that layer will look lighter because the opacity level is lighter. And then I did another layer just of like this halftone brush because um, I just think it looks cool. And yeah, that's just my process really. I make the script. I just kind of illustrate the words. <laughs> just export this whole file as a PSD to my computer, which is a Photoshop file. I'm going to try to walk you guys through my Rezo file setup process. It's going to be different for every printing place you go with. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt. Basically, I have flattened. Um, when I have it, my file, I have them all like grouped like this. But basically, I'm going to flatten them all. Um, it's a bit more complicated when you have more colors. Um, but because I'm doing this zine all in one in color, it's a lot simpler. So I'm gonna first start on my first page. If this was a print, I would just do this once, but because it's a zine, I need to do this 12 times for all the individual pages. Um, the way Resolve does it is they want you to make spot channels and I don't really know what that means. It's just, I do it because that's like what's required. Um, but all of the Rezo ink colors correspond to a Pantone swatch. So the one that the blue I want is this Pantone 3005. So then I go to my, the actual layer with all the stuff on it. I hit control A, control C. So I'm kind of copying all that and pasting it onto the spot channel. So I go to edit, paste special, paste in place. And then yeah, it's gonna look black just because I guess there's only one color. Mm. So now I have InDesign open. I want to create a document that is the same size as the finished product. So because I want my finished product to be five by eight inches, then I do file, place, um, and then I'll pick page one. And then boom, I'll just place this in place. I'll drag it into the right place and boom, there you go. That's page one. Um, and then I'm just gonna do that for all of the other pages. Um, but yeah, I hope that clarifies my process a bit. Um, I realize I didn't really do like the beginning to the end of the whole juicy process, but I don't wanna spoil too much of the zine because like I kinda want it to be a bit of a surprise. And like when you get it in your hands for the first time, if you choose to buy it, it'll be kind of exciting to like flip through new content. It's write the script, get everything down, um, and then I'll separate the script into the individual pages. So I'll say, okay, I feel like I want these three lines to be on page one. Um, and that might change as I'm drawing and I realize, oh, I feel like this deserves its own spread. And then I'll just do a bunch of sketching, my regular digital art illustration process. Um, and I'll do like the layers to be different opacity levels. Um, and then I just do my typical Rezo file setup like I just showed you and yeah, just send it off to print and hopefully it'll come back and it'll be super cute.
Hello, little check-in. Right now is 12.04, so it's about noon. It's like lunchtime for me. Um, I'm not super hungry because I had a bit of a late start today, but I should eat something because I'm gonna go spend the rest of my day at the ceramic studio because I got my zine done today. And that's pretty much like all I wanted to do today. So yeah, going to maybe pack a lunch, eat a little something something, and then I'm gonna go to the studio. You have the hood? <laughs> that was slow. Do you want the food? What? That's just other boy. Huh? Other boy. You're so rude. I said cute, but you didn't hear me. <laughs> So I want to talk about how much fun I've been having in my hand building class. I've learned hand building before in high school, but that was like really, really basic. Um, and honestly, I don't know if I learned that many techniques. Um, I mean, I did learn like the basics of a pinch pot and coil building, but I just feel like the class I'm learning now is a bit more advanced and I'm just learning a lot more techniques and a lot of things are connecting for me. Um, for example, I learned Something I've been having a problem with when I hand build is I, I don't use a banding wheel because I never really learned how to use it, so I just avoided it. Um, but now I'm realizing how useful this spinny wheel thing is. Um, it just makes it so easy to handle pieces, especially when you're pinching um, like a pot or a cup or something with higher walls. It just makes it so much simpler. Um, and even when I'm sponging, it just makes it really easy to handle. Um, so yeah, I've been loving the banding wheel. Even when I'm not making like a, a vessel, I still use it just cause it's just so nice to spin around and use. Um, another thing I learned was I asked my teacher um, a, if she had any tips on how to not make my pots like flare out. Cause that's a problem I had when I was hand building. I would like build it, build it. And then the walls wouldn't stay straight. It would just get progressively wider. And she was just like, oh, um, if that starts to happen you can use both of your hands and sort of squeeze and compress the walls in which is pretty much the equivalent of collaring on the wheel. Cause when you wanna make like a skinnier neck or for some, for example, on the wheel, that's kind of the technique you use, you sort of squeeze it. Um, and then I was like, oh, you can just kind of do similar movements. You do well uh, wheel throwing on the banding wheel. It's just obviously different because, you know, the wheel's not spinning super quickly, but it still is going in a circular motion. I don't know if any of this makes sense, but basically <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun and making a lot of connections and hand building is just so cool. Like. I saw one of my old instructors in the studio uh, on this day actually, and I told her that I was doing a hand building class and she was like, ah, much faster, but also a lot slower at the same time. <laughs> I was like, that's a really good way of describing hand building. Um, there's just so much flexibility with it too that I find um, I don't really have in wheel throwing. Like when you throw on the wheel, if you fuck up, like 
is over. <laughs> you kind of have to try again. You can fix it in certain situations, but it's a lot harder to. Hand building, I feel like there's a lot more grace. Um, and I just love the textures of hand building um, and pinch pots. I just think it looks so unique and interesting. And yeah, I'm really falling in love with building on um, the banding wheel. And it's a lot easier for me to make like attachments and additives to my pieces. Um, you'll see my other one I was just working on, I had like those little butterfly wings. And I just feel like hand building kind of suits me as an illustrator. I'm able to like, I don't know, just do funkier stuff. I obviously could do that with wheel thrown pieces, but I just think like the pinched sculpted look with your fingers just looks really, really cool. This is something else I learned. I learned how to trim the top of my pieces with a needle tool, which is something I never realized you could do hand building. So yeah, there's a lot of um, merit, I think, in taking a course. There's just so many things that you wouldn't, or I wouldn't be able to learn on my own. And like YouTube is a great resource, but having an instructor just be like, oh, just try this is just so cool. Sir, how am I supposed to, um... I wanted to pop in again during this little drawing segment to do a little voiceover. I wanted to chat about um, art markets. I recently have been trying to get into them. That was one of my goals last year, but I just never ended up getting to do it. But in February, I will be tabling with um, Mom, M-A-U-M. They are a really cool organization based in LA um, and they feature AAPI makers. Um, and I'm very excited to be a part of it. I've been to it before to support my friend Megan, but I've never, you know, I've never tabled ever before. Um, and Megan really, really loves tabling with mom. So she recommended it to me and they accepted my application, which is very, very exciting. So yeah, I will be there. Um, I don't know the exact date. I'll put it on the screen right now. February something, I think February 25th. Um, and I'm super excited. I've never done it in person. I never sold in person before and I'm really excited to potentially meet some of you who live in the area. Um, also, I'm really excited to not have to pack anything. <laughs> That's like one of the exciting, um, I guess like alluring parts of doing a market to me. It's like a very, it seems like a really cool exchange. Like I can just like hand you what you order and I don't have to pack it up. We don't have to use a bunch of materials. I can just directly give you whatever you buy from me. And I don't know, I feel like it's a very, um, very cool 
transaction. <laughs> um, so yeah, in a future vlog, it won't be the next one, but it'll probably be the one after that. I want to make like a whole juicy art market video um, where we can kind of follow my journey doing it for the first time and like buying a bunch of stuff for my display. I already have some things, but I definitely want to like experiment and like build it at home first and see, you know, how I want to set up my thing and then like I'll bring my little vlogging camera with me to the market the day of we'll get to see like how it goes and I feel like it'll be a really fun video and I'm excited to share that um, and I hope to have like all the new products I've been designing um, featured at the market first and then after that I'm going to have my shop update um, that first weekend of March so right after the market um, I originally was gonna have my shop update before, but then I was just like, that seems really confusing inventory wise. So I'm just gonna bring everything to the market, gonna have all my ceramics, um, some tote bags, new memo pads, new prints, stickers, the new zine, um, and it, they will be debuted at the market, which is really, really exciting. So yeah, I hope to see some of you there. Um, it's $5 and it's gonna be at The Row in downtown LA. Um, they have a pretty big parking garage, so parking is not too terrible. Uh, which is something a lot of us people who live in LA have to think about. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to let you guys know that that's going to be happening and yeah. Today I've been working on some sketching, as you've been seeing. I'm trying to figure out a new sticker design for uh, my Patreon benefits for next month. Um, and I kind of want it to be bunny themed because it's Lunar New Year and I, I don't know, I want it to be like rabbit vibes. Oh, I also ordered my zines this morning. They're gonna come in two weeks. Really excited to have the zines for the shop update. I am a bit nervous though because I've never sold zines in my shop before and I'm not sure how they're going to do. Another thing, oh my god, Rover smells like chicken. You can see he's right here. For 2023 and my shop updates I'm going to do, I'm gonna to stick to the same plan I did last year where I had a shop update every quarter basically. So four times a year, I feel like that works really well for me and my schedule. Um, and this year, because I wanna do some tabling um, at art markets, I feel like having them four times a year will be perfect. I don't really wanna push it and do any more than that. Um, because my calendar drop really went really well and um, I was initially nervous about that shop update because normally my strategy for shop updates has just been like make a bunch of things and just have all these new products to show. I have like stickers, t-shirts, tote bags, new prints. I just have a lot of things. So I kind of had this expectation for myself that my shop, every time I updated my shop, it had to be super grand and I had to keep on topping myself and just have something new and exciting. Um, but I see my like, art peers, I guess, updating their shops. And they still have really successful shop updates, but they don't always have like a million new products. Um, and I don't wanna make myself feel like I need to pump out all that stuff. And I do that just cause I'm worried like the shop update won't seem exciting enough or interesting enough and people won't really wanna come and buy stuff. Um, but the calendar drop really proved me wrong because I spent a bit more time into making just one item that I was really, really proud of and people receive really well, so. I don't know, I guess that kind of taught me like you don't need to kind of spend, you don't need to spend a bunch of time making a bunch of little things when you can spend more time making one thing that you're really proud of. Um, so for this first update, that was really my zine. I hope to have um, two new stickers, a print or two, and then um, the zine, and that's gonna be it for the new items and my ceramics as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just nervous because I know the calendar did really well just because people can use it and you can like display it on your wall. It's a very unique thing. But in terms of a zine, like I know people buy zines, but I'm just like unsure how well it's gonna do. So that's why I'm a little bit nervous, um, but we'll see. Um, I had a bunch of questions about my keyboard and I wanna address that very quickly. I really like it. Um, the keyboard is called the C do V65, I believe. And I got it from this website called Epo Maker. They actually sent this to me as a gift, which I'm very, very grateful for. So I will leave a link to it below if you wanna check it out. Um, I really like it. I've had a different keyboard sent to me before, but this one versus the other one is just so different. Um, this is a pre-built keyboard. So when, it send, when they send it to you, it's just like that. But I feel like it has such good sound um, straight out of the box.
one of them is a copy cake, and the other one just apparently just took the name. Anyway. Oof. Give Gideon a treat while I do that. Okay. Think about it. Go forth. Go forth. Cannot learn anything new for a minute, okay? We just need to take a second before I learn anything else. Try going in at a different time a different time that it's a weird different thing and that you're weird for I had my ceramics class today which went really well I got there a bit early so I, like I left the class early I've been pumping out so many things and I'm taking up so much space on my class's shelf that I was like I should stop <laughs> um, also like I'm trying not to sculpt too many things at once because then um, when it all comes out of the bisque firing I'm gonna be so overwhelmed and like it's just gonna take a while to glaze so I, I told myself I need to slow down I'm just having so much fun hand building but yeah I went to my class I came home and then I went for a run, which was really nice. I had a really good run today. Um, and yeah, now it's time for dinner. I'm gonna be making this recipe that I saw Justine Snacks make. I've been really enjoying um, her recipes. I've also been trying to like diversify my protein sources and uh, try some more vegetarian proteins out like a couple times a week. But honey nut bean soup or something, I'm just subbing the honey nut squash for butternut squash. Um, and I'm subbing the beans for chickpeas because that's just what I have. Her recipe also has Brussels sprouts too. So like you char the Brussels sprouts and you put a little bit on top, a little bit in the soup. Really quick. And then over here we have one of the first living rooms. I feel like I just have like a massive break here. So exciting. How are you filming it? Are you zooming in on the food? No, but I can. No, you don't have to do that. Okay. Nice, Robert. Nice. <laughs> Why are you zooming like this? I toasted you a little slice of bread too. Hello. 
that this is gonna be the end of the video. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. Um, if you guys wanna check out the sale, all the information on that will be in my description box. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you super soon in my next one. Bye.